In this video, we're going to talk about encoders. Now, the function of an encoder is to measure the motion or position of an object. And it can measure it either in a relative sense or in an absolute sense. So, for example, if we have a, a robot with an arm that is moving up and down, we want to know what the position of that arm is so that we know how to control it properly. Or if we have a shaft that's turning, for example, a wheel on a, on a wheeled robot, maybe we want to know how we might want to know how fast the robot is going or uh, how fast it's turning by comparing the relative velocities of, of two two different wheels. Their their basic function is that uh, there there are many different ways to uh, construct them, but basically we look for a a, a signal that that tells us there's been a change in state of the encoder and we can count these signals and by knowing how fast the, the encoder is changing we can tell for example how fast uh, the position is changing and how fast the, the wheel is moving. Now there are many types of encoders. Um, a couple examples are for example a magnetic encoder that you might find on say a car or a bike speedometer. So every time the wheel makes one revolution, a magnet passes by a sensor uh, and induces some kind of current in that sensor. And then the sensor sends a signal to a microcontroller. And then we then count every time the shaft passes by the particular sensor. And we can figure out how fast we're going. Another kind of encoder is an optical encoder. And there's a couple kinds of those. There's a, something, there's a reflective encoder, which is what we're going to show today and we'll get to in a minute. And there's also, this might be a good example here, is what's known as a, a or what I'm calling a see-through encoder. So if you imagine you had a disc that was attached to a shaft and you shined a light from one side of uh, the disc and you had some slits in this shaft, then every time the, every time a slit passed by this light, the light would pass through and you could have a sensor on the other side that would detect this light and every time it saw a flash of light, it would send a signal out to your microprocessor that would then signal that one tick has happened. Now, the encoders that we're going to uh, look at today are, oops, are these encoders here from Pololu. And we've got these encoders because they, they are made to go with the wheels that we bought. And uh, the system uh, works pretty well. And basically, what we have for this encoder, let's look at this picture here, is we have two reflective sensors here. And basically, these reflective sensors um, are two different channels, A and B. And they detect whether or not they're looking at either a white surface or a black surface. And if you look at the wheels that we've bought, this is probably the best image here, you can see that the inside of the uh, hub here is has um, has notches in it. So you can see that as this wheel is turning past this encoder, it's going to alternatively see white from the hub or black from the tire. And if we just count those, we just count the uh, the changes as those pass by the encoders, then we can figure out how fast our uh, our, our wheel is turning, and if we integrate that, we can keep track of what the position of our wheel is. Now, this page here from uh, Pololu has lots of information about how these encoders work, and in particular, you might notice that it has a drawing down here of the exact dimensions of the encoder, which could be very useful if you're trying to find a way to uh, mount this thing. But I'm going to do a little demo here using some of the uh, software that we've used for other projects in class. And um, I'll show you, uh, show you how these encoders really work. So here's what we're going to do. I've hooked up a little uh, demonstration here using an Arduino, which I've connected to a push button, a motor with a wheel attached to it with an encoder underneath. And I've connected it all to our to my analog discovery uh, oscilloscope. And what's going to happen is when I push the button, the wheel will turn one direction. And when I push it again, it will turn back the other direction. And we'll be able to see from the uh, oscilloscope what exactly is going on. If we look real quick at the picture here of the, the encoder board, 
we see that we have a, a voltage supply, which will be 5 volts, a ground, and then two output channels, output A and output B. And basically what happens is when one of the channels sees white, it outputs 5 volts, and when it sees black, it outputs 0 volts. And the nice thing is that this is uh, what's known as a quadrature encoder. And what happens is that channel A and channel B are offset by a half notch of our encoder. So by telling which one jumps to 5 volts first, channel A or channel B, we can tell which direction the, the wheel is actually turning. So let's go to our oscilloscope here. Oh, sorry, before we go to the oscilloscope. So this is the way that I've hooked up the, uh, wired up my discovery oscilloscope. I've connected the voltage, the V plus from my analog discovery system, which is a 5 volt um, output to the 5 volt input on my encoder. I've connected ground to ground, of course. I've connected uh, the plus 1, so channel 1 on my oscilloscope I've connected to channel A, and channel 2 on my oscilloscope I've connected to channel B. And then I've connected the, um, the, the negative side of the, those two channels to ground so that we have uh, something to reference. So if we switch to the oscilloscope here, then we can start uh, I'll pick up the uh, the device so that uh, it doesn't go flying off the table when I push the button, of course. And we'll push the button, and the wheel will start turning one direction. And in this case, it's turning such that um, channel B, which is blue, is jumping up to 5 volts before channel A, which is in orange. If I push the button again, the wheel reverses direction, and now channel uh, A, which is orange, is leading channel B. So by counting the number of, uh, by counting the rate at which the encoder channels go back and forth between 0 and, and 5 volts, we can see how fast it's moving. And by determining which one goes up first uh, and, and down first, we can tell which direction it's moving. So we can figure out essentially the, the complete state of our wheel, both direction and um, speed, at any given time. Now, of course, we have to write some software in order to catch these signals and count them and do the necessary calculations. And we can do that in Arduino fairly, fairly easily, and that will be the subject of another video.